Hey, I'm Zella Sage Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo, where we've already built a habitat for the biggest penguins in the game. And today, we're going to be building one for the smallest. Right next to Penguin Cove, we're going to be building a habitat for the little penguin, possibly the cutest animals in the game, and I'm really looking forward to building for them. So I'm putting some glass barriers in here in a nice shape because all the viewing for this habitat is going to be through glass. So we want some really nice curves so it all looks nice. And then while I start digging out the terrain so we can get the water in, I'll tell you about the concept for the build. Penguin Cove was actually supposed to have a little penguin habitat built into it, right into the, the rock work at the front on the right. But that build was really complicated and even though I spent about 10 days on it, I didn't have time to do the little penguin part of it. But ever since we built it, I just can't stop thinking about adding the little penguin habitat to it. So I decided that we're going to go back and do it anyway. And I'm really glad I did because when this is finished, I think this might be one of my favourite habitats. The design of the habitat is basically my own, very loosely inspired by Penguin Beach at London Zoo. And then when I was looking for inspo, I found the little penguin habitat at Cincinnati Zoo, which is really, really cool looking. Uh, I've not been there, I've just seen lots of photos of it. So I've used some of the design ideas and the aesthetics of their habitat as well, and mixed it in with the basic shape and design that I'd already come up with. And we're gonna get a fairly small, but hopefully perfectly formed habitat built right here. So what I've been doing so far is using our angry vendor to make sure that we can get the path to the exact right level that the guests are going to be able to see over the water and also under the water if they bend down which is um, what you want in a penguin habitat and then on this side here we're going to make a raised viewing gallery because the beach will obviously be higher than the water so we want the guests to be higher at this point as well um, this path thing took a long time as always it's been heavily edited down so that you guys don't fall asleep but um, yeah we eventually got there and we've got a nice little viewing gallery coming along here. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger later on as well so it's not cramped. And then we're gonna start putting in the terrain. So we're gonna dig up around here. I want this habitat to be as small as we can get away with because these penguins are tiny and we want the guest viewing to be really good. So we want them to be as close to the penguins as possible. So we're gonna have the majority of the habitat in this little circle here. And then we're gonna have a shelter for them behind it, which they'll be able to access, but the guests won't be able to see. And I've also dug just a little sort of trickle of water going into the main body of water there. That's something I saw at the Cincinnati Zoo that I really liked, so decided to copy that here. And then we'll join the viewing gallery onto the path with a nice smooth slope, so we don't have any stairs anywhere. And then we'll get the rest of the terrain in where the shelter's gonna go. We'll do some terrain painting. We'll get um, everything covered up with the fine sand. And then we'll go in with the uh, rough sand and just highlight a few areas so it's not all just one texture, like this little trickle of water here. And then it's onto the rock work. This is the part of the build that's most inspired by Cincinnati Zoo. Their whole habitat is covered in these huge golden yellow rocks, which I really like. We're going to tint the cracks in the rock with a little bit of an orange glow to make it look nice and warm. And then we'll just start moving the rocks around and getting them into position. Going to do this exclusively with the fake rocks from the aquatic pack. Really give you that sort of zooey look that you want. And as always, just lining them up and taking care to notice where the um, light bits and the dark bits are so that everything fits together nice and seamlessly. And when we're finished, it looks like one piece of rock work rather than just loads of um, random rocks stuck together. I'm going to make a little apology at this point. The footage is going past a little faster than it normally does. I'm doing that because the frame rate in this zoo, even on pause, is really poor now. And I don't want the video to be jerky. But I do have a solution to that, which is buying a new rig, <laughs> which I'm hoping to do this weekend. My PC is a mixture of sort of three-year-old and five-year-old components now. Uh, and they weren't top of the line when I bought them. So definitely time for an upgrade. So normal service should be resumed in the next episode. We'll get things back to the much slower and smoother speed that we normally have. What we're doing here is sorting out the access to the shelter for the penguins. These little archways are gonna be how they get in and out. I've tested it and they are small enough to fit through here, even uh, in Planet Zoo, which is great. So no need for any large holes or anything like that. We're just gonna have these little gaps here that let them get into um, and out of their shelter. I really like how that looks when it's done. Uh, they just look so cute waddling uh, in and out of the two little entrances there. We'll keep putting some more rocks in to get the whole thing built up. It's all going to be pretty high. And one of the reasons for that is that all of the land part of this habitat is going to be meshed over. I've seen that in pretty much every little penguin habitat um, that I've looked at in my research. There was nothing about meshing over the habitats in the little penguin care manual that I read, but um, 
I can only assume that they are so small that they're in danger of being eaten by hawks, eagles, etc. Especially in Southern California, you've got some fairly sizable birds of prey in this part of the world. So all of the land part of the habitat is going to get meshed over. I'm going to leave the water, um, A for aesthetics, B because it's easier, and C, I can't imagine eagles hunting penguins when they're swimming in the water. But uh, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But the mesh is going to be the last thing that we build. I want to make sure that everything is sort of set in place before we tackle the always horrendous task of uh, placing mesh in this game. This here is where the viewing gallery is going to go. This is going to enable the guests to see the penguins on the beach. And then the big expanse of glass around the front will be divided into two. And provide two different viewing galleries for seeing the penguins over and under the water. So we'll get our little dude across here and make sure that the glass is at the right height. What we're going to do is have this covered uh, with a cover that extends into the habitat as well so that it sort of feels like the, um, the guests and the penguins are in the same area. And this is also where we're going to put the penguins' food. At the moment, Zoo's being very careful to make sure that food for birds is under cover so that it can't be infected by bird flu, by native birds flying over or getting into the habitat. So that's something that we're going to replicate here. We'll finish that off later. I'm going to do some work on the shelter. This is going to be super simple because it's completely hidden from view by all the rocks in front of it. But I still can't bring myself to have a door that's stuck onto a wall. So we're going to use the concrete panel pieces to work around this door so that we can recess it properly into the wall like it uh, like it should be. Things like this are when you know you've spent way too long playing Planet Zoo. So we'll switch to a different size of panel here and just make sure that we can get the door completely fitted into this wall. And then we'll just sink it back into the hole that we've created. And then we'll put a really simple roof on, a nice corrugated roof, and then some sleeping platforms for the penguins inside. And then we'll move on to the enrichment items. Some water bowls to go into where the shelter that we were just talking about is going to go. We'll get them in a bit closer later on. And then an underwater fish feeder to keep the penguins underwater as much as possible. That's what we want to see. We'll sink that one down there. And then a little ice block as well. Normally I'd use the ice block with the fishes in it, but we're a bit short on toy enrichment in this habitat because there's some that I don't like that I don't really want to use. So we're going to use that instead of the fish. And then we're going to make a little custom log to go onto the beach as well, using some of the climbing logs, just to give it a bit of a unique look. Nothing complicated, I just want to get something that looks a bit like some driftwood. And then we'll move on to underwater. So this is my kelp pillar. I made this a long time ago for Tecton Zoo for the sea lion habitat. And what I want to do is basically just take this. It's just loads and loads of the underwater temple plants stuck together. I'm going to take this and chop it down and get it so it fits into this habitat, but also rotate it as we go so that it looks kind of like it's drifting uh, in the current of the water. I assume there'd be some kind of current in this water, keep everything fresh. So we'll just keep playing around with it until we get something that looks like the piece of kelp that I saw in the Cincinnati Zoo's habitat. Speaking of underwater, it can be very difficult to make underwater look good in Planet Zoo. And whenever we have a problem, it means it's time for Franchise Masters. Today we're going to learn a technique for making underwater look way better in Planet Zoo. The first person I saw using this technique was a creator with the amazing name of Rutzen Knupter. They and my good friend Romano Palacios built an incredible recreation of Yellowstone National Park, which I used for the North America episode of Planet Wild. And what you do is you place rocks underwater, and then the rocks that are underwater you colour with a shade of bluey green, quite a dark bluey green. And that makes the rocks look much more like they're actually underwater, especially if you still have rocks above the water that are the same colour as the rest of your rock work. Gives you a real sort of graduation from dry rocks to wet rocks. And it looks amazing at the back of viewing galleries. So we're going to do that all the way along here until we've got all the back of this underwater area filled in with these rocks. And then we're going to go in and do some terrain painting. So the floor where the rocks are is covered with rock, which is dark grey, and the rest of it is sand. And it gives you this effect that the further away the water gets, the darker and more bluey green everything gets, which is exactly what happens in real life. So effective. Really hope you find it useful. Let's get back to the build. Time for some plants. I'm pretty sure that this plant from the Oceania pack is an epiphyte, i.e. a plant that should grow on other plants because of the roots. But if we sink it down, it really looks like the um, slightly tropical looking grasses that they've got in the Cincinnati Zoo habitat. So we're going to use that. We're going to use some more Australian plants. And for once, we're not going to sink the ponytail palm down into the ground. Try and get away from that just for one habitat, I think. And then we'll line the bottom of the pool with these rocks. We're just going to use this one rock 
just so that the glass isn't sort of magically going into the ground. It looks like it's attached to something. We'll do this across the whole habitat here until we get to where this path starts to rise up. Uh, we're going to do something different when we get to that bit. And then we'll cover up the gaps as we always do with these decals that match in nicely with the rustic stone path. And then we're going to get some wooden posts in to split the glass up. So we're not just going to have this one enormous expanse of glass across the front of the habitat. I'm going to break it down so it looks like we've got two different um, areas of glass, which means that the glass wouldn't need to be so long, it wouldn't be enormously expensive. So we'll create the join using some of these rocks. We're just going to use one rock for this, spun in different directions to get a nice, fairly natural looking kind of rock pile here. I always try and use as few different types of rock as possible. They are really versatile, so we can just use this one rock, different textures at different ends of the rock to create the join between the two panes of glass here. And then we're going to move on and finish off the viewing gallery for the guests and the eating area for the penguins. Going to go for a real Oceanian flavour to this, but quite subtle at the same time. We're going to use a lot of pieces from the Oceania pack. So we're using some bark panels to create the roof. And then these uh, ceremonial oars, I think they are, to create a part of the supports for it. We'll cover them up with some more normal wood as well, just to get a kind of mix between the two. So it's slightly themed, but quite subtle at the same time. We'll cover up the harsh edges of the bark panels with these driftwood pieces. And then we we'll use this window piece, which I don't think I've ever used before, to join the upper level of the viewing gallery for the guests with the lower level of the gallery for the penguins. Really nice kind of rustic look to this piece. I really like this one. And then we're going to cover up the gaps in the path with some penguins. So you always end up with these little gaps when you create paths like this. Um, we've got a really cute little penguin statue in the Oceania pack. So we use that and a few other bits and pieces to cover up this little hole here. And then we've got a slightly bigger hole over here. So we need to come up with a different design for this one. So we'll move this guy over here and then maybe we'll get some rocks in that will be large enough to cover up that hole like these ones here. And then we can make some adjustments, get something nice and flat for him to stand on so that his feet are sort of um, meeting the base so it looks realistic. And I'm also going to recolor them as cute as this uh, pink little penguin is. I'm going to make it look more like a sort of rock sculpture. So we'll move him so that he's facing the guests and then we'll change the color so we can get it to merge in nicely with the rock work. A splash of blue as well. And then it's onto the final part of the build, the mesh. I say mesh, it's actually the netting pieces that we're gonna be using because they've got a slight curve in them which makes them look a lot more realistic for this kind of thing than the original mesh pieces. So we're just gonna make sure we can easily attach this to the viewing gallery on one side and the rock wall on the other. And then we'll line it up exactly with the end of this viewing gallery. And then we'll recolor it to a sort of a, a black, which is normally what color this kind of mesh is when I see it. And then we'll just copy it all the way across the habitat here. I don't think there's a quick way of doing this. There's actually a really nice control in the new console edition, which enables you to snap pieces to um, different meter movements, even if they're not on the grid, which makes things a lot easier with the controller. But I've got to say it'd make it even easier with a mouse uh, for certain jobs in Planet Zoo. Maybe they'll port that across one day. And then what we're going to do is line the edge of the netting pieces with the grasslands pole, which is the thinnest metal piece in the game, um, and start making this mesh look like it is uh, attached to something. This would be very lightweight mesh. It's not designed to keep animals in. Obviously, the, uh, the penguins aren't great at flying. It's to prevent predatory birds flying above from wanting to dive down and get the penguins. So it doesn't need to be particularly strong. It just needs to be some sort of visual barrier that's going to make an eagle or a hawk think, no, I'm not going to try and swoop down there and catch a penguin. The trickiest part of this whole process is this part, which is individually lining up each little pole with the rock wall so that the mesh looks like it's attached to the rock all the way around. Not easy, it takes a while, but I think you'll agree it's worth doing when you see the final result. And uh, let's check that out now. Here it is. I love how this looks with Penguin Cove and the Flying Fox Forest in the background. It looks so cool. We've got a couple of penguins on their way to the water now. Uh, well, okay, one of them's fallen asleep. It's so cute how they do that. Let's follow the other one, see what he gets up to. He's heading for the driftwood. Let's see if he's going to get into the water from there. No, okay, he's just gonna stand on it. We got another guy in the background. Maybe this one will go into the water. There we go. I'm really pleased with this habitat. I really hope you guys like it. It's one of those habitats that really looks like how I imagined it to be before I started building it. I'm so happy with how it's turned out. And I've spent a lot of time watching these little guys just waddling around in it. 
The vocalizations are really cool as well. You'll hear some of those in a second. I spent ages buying exclusively dark blue penguins, so they looked a bit more realistic. The standard blue penguins are a lot bluer and a lot brighter than they are in real life. But these guys aren't far off the real thing, really happy with how this looks. We've got an exclusively dark blue colony of little penguins in here. This is where we started today, and this is where we are now. That dark green square you can see in the background is where our night house is going to go. Let's check out the Explorer's Monolith. Thank you so much to all of you who've joined. Hit the join button on the channel if you want to see your name up here, and I'll see you again next week for some more Planet Zoo. Thanks for watching. Bye.